Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Today is October 24th, 2021. It is the, um, the feast day of the Archangel Raphael, and that's what we'll be speaking about this morning, about him and the other archangels and angels in general um, in Christianity. So <clears throat> I'd like to begin by um, doing a short meditation and inviting, um, inviting those angels in to be with us. In our uh, mystical um, ordinations and initiations, we're often inviting the four archangels, that would be Raphael, Gabriel, um, Michael, and Uriel, in to um, be uh, present and make a container for whatever kind of uh, uh, sacrament we're engaging in. So behind me, we have the four uh, archangels that are generally considered, the, or, or that have um, been the most um, prevalent, let's say, in Christianity. Although there are many others in different forms of Christianity, and sometimes there are seven archangels, sometimes there are many more. So um, I like this image in the stained glass behind me of the four archangels, and we'll talk about them. But at first, I'd like to have us have an experience of them, or um, uh, invite them to be with us so that we can feel their energies and benefit from them. So we'll begin by closing our eyes, <clears throat> taking a few deep breaths and getting ourselves from our head down to our heart. The heart is the place in us where we can perceive many things of the spirit without words, sometimes even without images, maybe just as vibration or energy. But we want to come from our heart from a place of devotion, a place of simplicity and openness, without skepticism and without fear. And cultivating a sense of wonder in our hearts, wondering if we can call in these beings that we devote ourselves to. And we'll do that with an opening prayer now. And just notice what happens in your mind, in your heart, in your body, in your being as we invite these beings to, to be with us in our time this morning and through the sacrament. So just perching on your heart with a sense of wonder, join me in this invocation. Most high and glorious God, Master Jesus and Blessed Mother Mary, saints and angels and helpers of our souls, we welcome you this morning <clears throat> into the sanctuary of our hearts and into this sanctuary where we gather together to have a deeper understanding and experience of your presence. In particular, this morning, we welcome the archangels Raphael, Gabriel, Michael, and Uriel to join us with your essence, with your being. Raphael as the healer of God. Michael as the protector, the fighter of the darkness. Gabriel as God's messenger. And Uriel, the archangel of wisdom, of light. We welcome you in your graces to surround us, to fill us with your presence we might come to know you, to call on you when we are in times of trouble, to call on you in prayer for our planet, for humankind, for our own consciousness that we would rise up, that we would be beacons of light, fulfilling our mission, our soul's mission on the earth for the upliftment of humankind and the glory of God. We thank you for making your presence palpable to us. And with all gratitude, awe, and respect, we welcome you here. In the name of all holy beings, we pray. In the name of the Creator, the Mediators, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And keeping your eyes closed for a moment, just feel whatever shift in energy <clears throat> has occurred in and around you, if you have any sensation of that. Maybe you notice your mind going quiet, 
maybe you notice some tingling or thickening in the air, denseness in the air around you. Maybe you notice um, images or um, words coming into your consciousness. So as humans, we are watched over and we have access to these beings that we call angels to help us and to help humankind. And as we take on the mantle of our own ministry and our own um, place as mediators, we recognize that we have access to these beings that can help us and help the earth. And so we call on them to amplify and magnify our prayers. I'm going to read a couple of pieces of scripture that uh, speak about the angels from Luke 15, 10. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Hebrews 1, 14. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Psalm 91. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Colossians 1, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Luke 20, but those who are considered worthy of taking part in the age to come and in the resurrection from the dead will neither marry nor be given in marriage, and they can no longer die, for they are like the angels. They are God's children, since they are children of the resurrection. Revelation 4, 8, each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around even under its wings. Day and night they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Revelations 14. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. So there are many, many um, passages in the Old and New Testament where people are testifying to the presence of angels. And in the kind of mainstream Christian tradition, we know about uh, the angel Gabriel coming to Mother Mary at the Annunciation and asking her if she would be the mother of the Messiah. And we know about the angel coming to the shepherds and lighting up the sky and helping them find their way to Mother Mary and the baby Jesus at, at um, Christmas time, um, and the angels that were surrounding Jesus um, when he was on the top of the mountain and uh, went through the, uh, the illumination, but it has another name, transfiguration, the transfiguration. So he was up in the air with these two angels around him. And in art, uh, like the images behind me, we see angels who look like humans and have wings and other images of uh, angels like, for example, uh, paintings of Jesus. Um, when St. Francis received the stigmata, the image of Jesus was Jesus wrapped in nine, in, in six wings, four of them covering his body and two of them flying. There were six red wings. And then the image of the, um, the uh, angels that have uh, no face, just wings and eyes all over them. So you see a lot of these, if you look up um, angels in uh, classical artwork, you see these images that have come through time, some of them from the quotes that I just uh, read to you from Revelations in particular has a lot of um, visions of the realities, the interdimensional realities and the angelic realm. And 
then there, is lot, there are lots of colloquial things that people talk about having a guardian angel or feeling angels among them or feeling like they had an angel save them or someone was watching over you or someone's watching out for you or um, somehow you got this message, someone whispered in your ear, um, the angel sitting on your shoulder. So we have lots of uh, kind of anecdotal information and um, ways of speaking about angels that are, you know, kind of um, colloquial, kind of like just part of the culture, our culture, but every culture, not, not just in Christianity. In other cultures, there are lots of talk about beings that what might be considered angels. And uh, they, they get called different names in different cultures, but throughout the denominations of Christianity, there's some mention of angels. So we have to take that seriously. Uh, even though the scientific rational mind of the world would say that that is, a, let's say, a, a collective delusion uh, that angels exist, um, there's a lot of evidence, anecdotal evidence, that uh, people believe in angels, and when people are asked, most people say, well, yeah, I think there's something, there's something there helping me. Um, and then also, um, people have experience of angels or light beings that they can't, that you can't explain away. Once you have an experience yourself of seeing something or feeling the presence of something, you can't really explain that away using reason. So if you have an experience, that's kind of a fact, you know, just like, I woke up this morning and that's a fact and um, I saw an angel or I felt an angel or I, <clears throat> I knew that there was a being there helping me. So in particular when we when we look to the Archangel Raphael who I believe is here in this picture so each of the angels have a particular quality and Raphael his uh, feast day today is one of the uh, three angels um, accepted in the, the Catholic canon. Um, he is the healer and the story is that he came to help um, uh, Tobias be healed. If I have this right, he met with, his, with Tobias's son by the water and he was getting a fish and then the angel Raphael took part of the fish to heal his father and then he led him home. So he's the patron saint of travelers and he's also a healer. So you can call on him if you're traveling or if you need healing or you need other, know other people who need healing and you don't know how to do that or what to do, you can ask uh, the Archangel Gabriel, I mean, uh, Raphael to go and take care of those people or help them on their journeys. Um, I often give people travel blessings and I didn't, I did know that, uh, that Raphael was the healing angel, but I didn't know he was the patron of travelers. So now I'll add that to my travel blessings when I send people travel blessings. So what does this all have to do with us as humans, as Christians? What do we do with this information of these otherworldly beings who are seemingly um, here to protect us, to help us, to, um, you know, to come to us when we need support? And to look at each one of us as human beings, as some as a beings that are in need of uh, spiritual protection, guidance, healing, all of those things. So this kind of brings into question our worldview about who are we and what are we doing here on this planet that these beings would be um, at our disposal in a way, or that that God would send us a guardian angel for ourselves to make sure that we make our way through life to keep us, not to just keep us alive, but to keep us on the path of our faith and also our um, uh, transformation or our conscious upliftment. Um, if life was random and we didn't have any, um, we were just creatures on the earth going through our life like every other creature on the earth, then we probably wouldn't need to have these superhuman beings coming to interse intercede for us. And that we have them, like in the song by Sarah McLaughlin that I played this morning, when we find ourselves in situations where we don't know what to do and we don't have the insight, we don't have the um, wherewithal to help ourselves, we can call on these angels to be helpers for us. And if we tune in, we can feel and maybe see the miracles that they perform in us and around us. And, and that we can 
create a relationship with them. Um, these angelic realms are, um, they are, let's say, wiser, um, more conscious, more aligned with God and God's will than most human beings are. And it seems to me that's why we need them. <clears throat> Their job is to keep us alive long enough to see if we will remember ourselves as being one with God and being create powerful creative beings. And um, in, the, in the scriptures about Jesus, it says that he is above the angels. In the resurrection and the ascension, he went above the angels. So the angels are at his beck and call, and if we are aligned with him, then they also are at our beck and call. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, I just mean in the way of ease, that if we are to ask for their presence with respect and gratitude and not frivolity or self, you know, uh, personal self-interest, then um, they are available to move in ways that we can't move because we are limited in our physical and mental forms. So we think of it that way. So when you say a prayer for someone, maybe you're praying to Mary, maybe you're praying to Jesus, um, and they are sending out these beings to go and give the thing that you're asking for graces, peace, mercy, healing, whatever it is. So it, it leaves us with a, an interesting dilemma in today's world, which is how do we reconcile living a life in the flesh, doing the things that we're doing day to day, and also being um, creatures that have access to the power of these archangels and many other angels, that we have access to them. So it might make you ponder, like, who am I, a little creature of the earth, to have that kind of access and that kind of power? And I hope that that is what you're thinking. First of all, I would say it might make you feel humble and grateful that you have access to these beings and other beings that can help you and other people. Secondly, it might start to dawn on you that we're here to become, you know, as Jesus said, know you not that you are gods, to become the incarnate spirit of our own being. And that that being, that higher being that we're trying to bring into this physical form to become creators and, um, and transformers of the energy of humankind and the consciousness of humankind and this planet we're on, um, that we would have, um, that we would be also above the angels in that way. And that part of ourselves would be above the angels. So I'd like you to imagine that our human consciousness might be grateful and in awe, but these angels coming to help us means that we are worthy of that kind of celestial support and celestial intervention while we are working to come into full consciousness of ourselves as um, God beings, as um, spiritual beings in a physical form. So that's a big, a big question to wrap your head around. And Jesus came to the earth to show us how to do that first by uh, forgiveness so that we can forgive the people of the world who have harmed us knowing that they don't know what they're doing they're in that same limited human mind body mess to forgive them um, and to love them to love them that love is the transforming grace that we have to offer people we assist them we love them we serve them and that in turn helps them to remember themselves and if we're in a position where we don't feel like we have that kind of personal power, we can call on these angels to help ease the way for the other humans who are also spiritual beings trying to excuse me, come to some greater understanding of themselves as, as God beings or as beings of light or as beings who are here for a purpose. I see a lot of suffering in the world and all of the work that I do in the world. So I'm a, I'm a teacher, I'm a counselor, and a minister. So nearly all of my 
work life is um, relating with people and how people are doing. And as you may know, people are struggling and suffering quite a lot. And it's very sad to see, especially sad when, when we think about ourselves in this kind of in juxt juxtaposition to this, this being that has access to and in some ways command over the angels. Like that doesn't seem to jive, does it? Um, that so many people feel so helpless, hopeless, powerless. Um, and that, in fact, we can call on these magnificent archangels, these magnificent beings of, of um, light and power to do our bidding. So what will we do with that? What will we do with that, I wonder? As I was contemplating uh, Raphael, um, the healer, I thought about, um, so in our group we have this uh, interdimensional uh, temple that we call Avalon, which I heard uh, recently might be called the Alchemist's Chamber. And an alchemist chamber is a place where you go to make change. You know, alchemist is turning one substance into another. So in Avalon, we are praying and blessing certain situations and trying to change them. And in those places, we have called on um, these beings, Jesus and Mary and angels and Mary Magdalene and the divine feminine mentors and all these other beings. And so we can add these archangels to our, um, our list of supporters of Avalon, of our alchemist chamber of our temple of transformation and and um, have their power magnify the blessing that we're giving out and together those of us who are doing that and anyone who wants to join in that together that prayer resounds through the heavens and calls on all of these beings to come and help with this transformation that we're trying to have happen and that is the raising of consciousness so that people can have the mind in them that was in Christ Jesus, that mind that knows it is one with God, and that mind that knows that it has power to transform and create. And so we would then use it to transform and create first ourselves, and then our earth, and then humankind, and to help relieve the suffering of people who are, who are um, struggling. So that is the, the mission that we have if we awaken to it. So in Christianity, how do we get people to awaken to that? First, we remind them that they're beloved of God. Then we help them learn how to forgive and go through a sequence of, um, of uh, sacraments that help them remember, remember, remember themselves. So if we take off all of our burdens and we give ourselves over to God's consciousness and we pray to know ourselves and we become you know, more and more clear about just who we are in the eyes of God, how beloved we are, not only beloved children of God, but beloved beings that God made in God's image, which means God beings. And here we are in this dimension on this beautiful earth with uh, one another, um, trying to learn how to, how to do that, how to be beings of love and light, um, like the angels, above the angels, commanding the angels. And what will we do with that kind of power? So we know many of you probably have more familiarity with uh, the Archangel Michael than other angels and, and as the protector. And so because we have this kind of power and so does every other being in the universe that was created, um, then there are some who, who might use that for, um, for the purposes of gaining power over others. And that's where all the, you know, all the wars of the heavens and all of our superhero movies and all those things that we see um, in our worlds um, where we see that these angelic beings have the intention to allow each person to have their own power uh, the way that God intended. And along with that, each person has their own will, unless we uh, forget that we can use our will and that we can align our will with God or with goodness, or we can align our will with, um, with other, um, say, darker aspects of the universe. And that's where we get to choose. So Jesus says, choose the light, keep your eyes single, your whole body will be filled with light. Um, know you not that you are God's. And, and um, he tells us how to get ourselves back to that so that we can, as he says, do even more than he did. 
Now, if that doesn't make you curious, I wonder what will. What could be more than what Jesus did? He came, he lived and taught, he died uh, an innocent, and then he rose from the dead to show us that we're not just the body, to remind us that we're conscious, we're beings uh, at another level of, um, of uh, the universe, another dimension, and we are not just the body, and that our that being goes on forever. So what is it about this life? What is it about this curious life where our higher selves and, and the powers that be um, decide to put us into a physical form and try to figure this thing out? And how are we doing figuring it out? You know, if we look at the world, if we look out at the world, we say, we're not doing such a great job. We're not taking care of our planet. Many people aren't taking care of themselves. People hurt themselves and they hurt others because they don't know who they are. They don't know they're, they're beings of light and power. They don't know that love is the answer. Um, and so they struggle and they suffer and they harm one another. And, you know, it's really an atrocity. It makes the angels weep to see the way that beings such as ourselves who have so much, let's call it potential for holiness and godliness, choose to use it in other ways. And I think that's why many of the religions got into that kind of mode of shaming and blaming people because we can choose that and people do choose that you know just look at the news people choose it all the time um, so what do we do we choose something else and we hold fast to that and we ask these magnificent beings to help us and others and then we help others trying to get everybody to wake up to themselves so that we can live on a planet on this beautiful planet in harmony with the planet and in harmony with ourselves as beings who are creative and loving and light-filled and we become stewards of the planet instead of consumers of the planet. And then imagine that more beautiful world our hearts know is possible. So this, this realm of angels, or the many, many realms and levels of angels, there are lots of names for angels in the Bible, seraphim, cherubim, thrones, dominions, virtues, powers, principalities, um, you know, a lot of say levels of in the hierarchy of the angelic realm um, that's a lot of beings out there making um, making sure or trying to make sure that we wake up enough to align our will so we don't we have free will and that is one of the unique things about being human we can't be we can't have our will taken from us but we can be we can be scared into not thinking our will can make any difference and we can be oppressed into not being able to exercise our will, at least maybe physically. Um, and our psyche can be convinced that we are not very powerful. But if we follow a way, um, for example, Jesus's way, we follow a way into remembering that we can reclaim all of that and reclaim our rightful place as conscious, loving, light beings who have power and will to do good um, and to call on these angelic realms to help us with that. So that's the way I see uh, humanity um, growing and maturing. And, and I hope that you will, in your own practices and your own prayers, ask for confirmation of such things. Ask for your own experience that says, oh, I've seen an angel or I know they're available. <clears throat> I call on them. I trust in them, I count on them, um, I, I communicate with them, I thank them, uh, these beings, the same, in the same way we would do as in our devotional life to Jesus and Mary, would acknowledge and um, call upon these beings to, um, to help us. So the other night I was doing a class about death, dying, and the dead, and I'm talking about how, you know, if you have a feeling that there's someone near you, or you have a a vision or a dream of a of a person who has died and you feel them hanging around you you can call on any of these angels to to take them home pay take them back to to God to the source of life where they will gain wisdom about how they live their lives so I, I when I talk to people about that they often will say they've had those experiences where they feel like someone someone's there someone they know or um, a, a dead person or a ghost as we as we call them on this side um, 
that they get scared and they don't know what to do and and they don't they don't want to have that experience but if you are having that experience which is very common in fact you can just call on an angel and say come and help bring this person back home to god so why is that why is that uh, soul coming to you to begin with because you have some light in you that you can see them or feel them and that's all they can see. They can't see the higher part. And if you have a connection with the higher part, you could just be a bridge or, a, you know, crosswalker that helps them go on their way. Let them know you don't have a body anymore. You're dead. You need to go this way. Here's an angel that can help you. Here's Jesus that can help you. And, you know, send them on their way. Be an intermediary, an intercessor for them in your prayer or in your um, your visions or dreams or meditation space or however you encounter um, people who have passed but haven't transitioned. And when you're praying for people who have died, you can send yourself or send the angels to them and help them help them go across. Otherwise, in their heaviness and their denseness, they can be kind of lost and, and roaming around not in this kind of intermediary space, not knowing if they belong to the earth or to the heavens. Or they might be afraid because maybe they haven't been such a good person. They might be afraid of what judgment might mean. And in fact, it doesn't mean what we think it means. It is much more about coming into awareness of the things we missed, the things we didn't do that we could have. Um, and certainly a lot of uh, remorse and um, pain from seeing things we did that were harmful to other people. So now we're talking about the realms between here, the third dimensional body, I'm in a body, I'm walking around the earth, I'm eating, I'm sleeping, etc. to parts of us that have access to other dimensions, as Jesus did, as Jesus taught, as actually all of the, say, avatars that have come to earth, earth have taught, there are higher and higher levels of our own consciousness, and then we can tune into them through prayer and meditation and study of scripture and many other ways, the ways that we talk about, you can sing or chant, you can, you can, uh, um, do practices that people have been doing across millennia to reconnect to that part of yourself and that part of the universe that um, gives us access to angelic beings and other beings. So it seems very mysterious to some and very magical and miraculous, but in fact it is a technology, a spiritual technology that we all have access to and we can learn and, and cultivate and get help with. So whatever area of your own personal life that you think, oh, I'd like to have help with this thing, however mundane, I need a job, I need to understand this relationship, I need to grieve my beloved and who died and know what to do with that feeling. Um, I need to know why I'm on the earth and like, what am I doing here? If I am a God being and I'm in the earth, what am I doing here? And then try to figure out what it is that you came to do, try to remember. Ask the angels, ask your own angel, ask Jesus to help you remember. And you'll start to get cues and clues about that in your dreams, in your visions, in your meditations, um, in the longing of your heart moving you towards something, um, in your creative life, whatever kinds of creative things you do. You know, if you do poetry or art or music or, you know, whatever, whatever your thing is, um, you'll start to see how the universe put you here to use you also as a vehicle, as a channel for transformation, for confirmation that we are creative um, beings of spirit here in the material world and what will we do with that. And there's plenty of plenty of stories about those beings um, across the planet. No, 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 it's not hard to find uh, the lives of saints and beings who have lived um, fantastic lives, doing fantastic things for humankind. So um, there's plenty of proof that that's what we're here to do. So for each of us then, we have to figure out what is it that each one of us is here to do. And the uh, practices that we do to connect to the spirit help to reveal that to us and help to give us the, the next right thing that will move us in the direction of our own mission. What are we here on the planet doing? So I know that many of the people that I'm speaking to in this Sunday service are already ministers or already doing those things, but it doesn't hurt to remember that we have access to these angelic beings who are helpers to us so that we don't have to think we're doing it alone and we don't have to 
feel like um, we have to have all of that energy has to come from us, you know, from our limited human cells. I have to get a, get up enough energy and power to do this thing that I want to do, but that there's so much help available to us. So that can make us, that can lift us up and lighten our load. And we can step forward knowing that the universe is full of beings who want to help us succeed in fulfilling our own personal soul mission and also tuning into the greater mission of humankind of consciousness and love and being part of that, part of creating that more beautiful world our hearts know is possible. So I invite you to have hope in that and to allow yourself some joyful anticipation of what will it be like to have an encounter with an angel and how will that change your life and how will that guide your life. Um, so as we go into our communion service, which is a, an, a sacrament and an energetic exchange of whatever is heavy in you, for the lightness of the um, the energy of angels and saints and um, your own higher self. You can be offering up the things that you have fear and doubt around and then opening to receive the blessing of certainty and faith and grace and uh, miracles and angels and um, let that light your heart up. And the lighter you are, the more tuned in you can be to uh, these beings that are so available to help you. So uh, you can prepare yourself for communion as I prepare, and we'll uh, make this divine exchange. O Mother, Father, most glorious, and Christos, most high, through the great masters of earth, Jesus and Mary, we beseech thee to absolve us of all error and misgiving. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord of earth, thou grantor of all prayers, it is my word that this bread shall be transmuted into the flesh of thy body and thy mind. Being transformed, I commend it in your memory for the forgiveness of sins. Glory unto the Creator for its power. Glory unto the mediators for their life. Glory unto the Holy Spirit for its nature. For thus is transformed the essence of earth and heaven. Amen. into the blood of our most glorious Lord of earth, Jesus Christ. Amen.
O God of creation, through thy holy word, and through the power granted unto me over the life and the death of creation, do I commend myself unto the transformed wine and blood of our Lord Jesus for the raising of the consciousness. And may now the Holy Spirit descend through it and infuse it with life eternal. Amen. All souls gathered here partake of the body of Jesus and know that by the fruits of your labors, you are absolved of all past error and misgiving. Thus you are a partaker of the life through Christ Jesus. In Jesus and Mary's names, this is done. Name of the creator, the mediators and the Holy Spirit, amen. Drink of the blood of Jesus, which is infused with the essence of the great Christos above. Now go forth and let your light shine before all. In Jesus and Mary's names, this is done. Name of the Creator, the Mediators, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Holy Ones, we thank you for the blessing of this sacrament. We thank you for your presence and your peace and your power. We pray that you would go with us into this day, that you would be available to us to remind us of who we are, to remind us of our God nature, of our free will, of the power of our being. Help us and protect us guide us and support us as we come into ever deeper awareness of ourselves as spirits in material form. We receive your blessings and your presence in gratitude and in your most holy names. In the name of the Creator, the Mediators, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all for joining me and uh, you're welcome to put in any questions. I'll be posting this recording on the Ma Devi site and on our Sacred Balance site. You're welcome to ask any questions or if you have other topics that you would like me to address around the angelic or other uh, realms, we can do that at another time. Peace to you. We'll talk soon.